Just north of Los Angeles, there's a better place, a quieter place, where life vibrates at a different frequency. Got a long weekend and don't want to drive too far? Here are some nice camping spots within an electric car's range of L.A. Affect the single strand, the whole web is affected. Taking the Angeles Crest Highway north from Glendale, I leave the city far behind. I head up into the Angeles National Forest. This is a favorite place to drive for muscle cars motorcycles, cool old cars, collector's cars, trikes and bikes, but beware of bikes going too fast, followed by sheriffs. Boy racers gather up here to spin donuts and the sheriffs come and shut them down, but I thought cops liked donuts. There's also fire trucks and ambulances and you wonder, did someone push it too far? So I drive on past all the noise and macho bravado, across a bridge over a deep ravine and up into the mountains. I rise up to almost 4,000 feet elevation, finally reaching the first campground, the Camp of Monte Cristo. Sometimes a river runs through it, melted snow from the mountain peaks, crystal clear but cold as ice. It's early in the year and the campground is almost deserted, just the way I like it. Quiet, peaceful. I have my pick of the spaces. This is a bare bones campsite with pit toilets. That means they work on the principle of the long drop. There is running water here. It's cold, but refreshing. Just 30 miles from the city of LA, it's a very different world here. No internet, no TV, and the very edge of cell phone service. I give myself over to the tranquility of nature. With just a little daylight left, I open up the kitchen and make myself some supper. But this isn't a cooking show, so I'll cut to the campfire and the stargazing, which is what it's all about, really, looking up at the sky and wondering on your place in the universe. The sun comes up and it's time to get out of bed. Time to wake up and smell the coffee. A nice cup of Joe, Trader Joe. I eat my breakfast and marvel at a nest of ants. They all work together in perfect harmony with their environment. Oh, that it were so with man. Now, fully caffeinated, I pack up camp and plan a route to the next destination. Okay, so today we're going to try and make it to Lake Piru. Today I want to drive to Lake Piru, a large lake to the west of Santa Clarita. I head back down Angeles Crest Highway. More bikes, but if you pull to the side and let them pass, they give you a nice wave. Back over the bridge, then take a right turn down Big Tahunga Canyon. Pausing for a while to look out over the Big Tahunga Dam. Then continuing on through the tunnel 
and kiss the forest fond farewell. A quick blast along the 210 and 5 freeways, then west from Magic Mountain along the 126 and into the town of Piru, known for its historic railroad and the Santa Felicia Dam. The dam holds back about a million cubic yards of water and covers over a thousand acres. A truly idyllic place for hiking and water sports. But it's no longer permitted to swim in the lake as there have been over 13 drownings in as many years. The most recent being actress Naya Rivera, a star of the TV show Glee. And then the only two things that are open right now is the uh, actual lake and then the uh, day use park. Oh, we don't have no printed uh, map. You can take a picture of it if you want. Yeah. There are over 200 campsites. Some have hookups and there's plenty of amenities. A large boat ramp provides access for water sports. Fishing, sailing, boating and water skiing, but only if you don't fall in. And remember, always wear a life jacket. The campsite itself is actually closed at the moment, as I'm here out of season. It's inhabited only by some deer and a few cows. The water level is way down right now, only about half full. This was a boat ramp here, now just a dry dock. There are some nice sandy beaches and it's so tempting to take a swim. The day use area is open and quite deserted. No screaming kids, which is great. I think I'll have a cup of tea and a sandwich and enjoy the afternoon sun. I just can't believe that I have this whole park to myself. Nobody else. Fantastic. The campsite doesn't open until March. Although I'd like to just stay here the night and would probably be fine. I'm going to drive on to another campground near here. Kennedy Grove Park, just north of Fillmore along Highway 126. The sun is getting low now and I hope I can find the campsite okay. This is what the entrance looks like in daylight, but when I arrived here it was dark. The barrier was closed and it took me the longest time to find my way in. But I found a space and made my supper. It's great being self-contained in a van. Just roll out the bed and it's good night, moon. In the morning, I get to discover the place. First things first, find the bathrooms. Here's an aerial view to show the big picture. There's an amphitheater here in the campground and I wonder what they use that for. There's fields and orchards all around here. This is known as the Oxnard Plain and is one of the most fertile places in California. Famous for its strawberries and raspberries, it produces an annual crop valued at over $1 billion. Back down on Earth, I take a leisurely breakfast. 
accompanied by some of the local wildlife. The route for today will be north from Highway 126 to Ojai and Lake Casitas. I drive past fields of fruit trees, lemons, avocados. Unfortunately, they're a long way from ripe. I turn off the 126 into the quaint little town of Santa Paula. Sitting right in the heart of the Santa Clara River Valley, it's known as the citrus capital of the world. A historical town with a long memory. Here, a couple of bronze motorcyclists commemorate the 1928 St. Francis Dam disaster that killed 431 people. Dam. Heading north out of Santa Paula along Highway 150, I decide to check out Steckel Park Campground. A lovely little campground with a creek running through. There's an aviary here with quite a variety of birds. Doves, geese, and even a cock or two. Not that I approve of keeping birds in cages, but at least they can get down to fertilizing some eggs in safety. Back on the road, the next point of interest is St. Thomas Aquinas College, a Roman Catholic liberal arts college whose curriculum is ordered to the learning of truth about nature, God and man. In this beautiful valley, one can feel close to nature and to God and keep a safe distance away from the truth about man. Driving on past more fruit trees and down a long descent, then into the Ojai Valley. And finally into the town of Ojai. There's plenty to see and do here in Ojai, but I want to get to the lake and set up camp. I approach the grand entrance to Lake Casitas. Yeah, so we have basic tent sites that don't come with any hookups. We have uh, basic hookup sites that come with electrical water, um, and then you need an RV for any of the other sites. Yeah, it's $35 per night. Are there any other campsites around here? Around here you can try Foster Park. It's down the road here about five miles to the right. Or yeah. you could try up the Highway 33. There is a campground called Wheeler's Gorge. I believe their campgrounds are $20 a night. Okay, uh, but the 35 includes access to the lake. Can you swim in the water? No, it's a drinking water reservoir, so there's no oh, swimming okay. allowed or any body contact really. Okay. Okay. Thanks. No problem. A gorgeous lake on a hot sunny day and no swimming, that sucks. Strange, they let boats contaminate the water with oil, but no bodily fluids allowed. I bet the ducks shit in there. The camping areas are named for birds. I'm going to check out the Mallard campsite. It looks great. Mallard Campground, site number 17. A Porsche Cayenne trying to reverse an Airstream trailer, a very different class of camper. Casitas is a long skinny lake with lots of inlets, several boat ramps and over 400 sites. Some of the sites have hookups and all of them have fire pits. Although it's best to bring wood, with a bit of scrounging around you can get a healthy blaze going. And blaze is just the thing to do.
and some more stargazing. The less city backlight, the more stars you see. The dawn of a new tomorrow, sunrise on the lake. I begin the morning ritual, boil the water and make some tea. <laughs> it looks like he gave up reversing and drove in forwards. The Osprey campground boasts an airstrip for model aircraft, which seems like a good idea. From up here I can see a boat ramp and my campsite. In the high season it probably gets quite full and you may have to make reservations, but today it's quiet and I get to explore in peace. There's a lot of bike trails around the lake. I decide to go for a ride. It's getting hot and I want to get close to the water, even if I can't swim in it. A sign indicates a two mile trail, so the adventure continues. Mile two, baby. A great view from up here. Nice place to stop for a quick yoga break. It's too far to go around the whole lake, so I go back the way I came. I'm running out of water, but just a little way to go now. Safely back at the van, I'll plot the course for the next leg of the journey. I want to stop and check out Foster Park Campground, and then go on to McGrath Beach. This is Foster Park, and here's the campground. Looks like school's out. It's a little on the primitive side. Hmm, I hope these aren't the only bathrooms. I head back out onto Highway 33 South, down into Ventura. Through Ventura and south on Harbour Boulevard, and I get to McGrath Beach. It's misty here. Cars have their headlights on early. Unfortunately, I find that the campsite is closed due to COVID. Looking inside, it seems to be flooded. In the wintertime, the campsite floods from the Santa Clara River, but once the sandbar breaks, it soon drains and can be opened up for the season. In the misty evening light, it looks ominous and foreboding. And as the sun sets, I drive on into the night. Fortunately, I have a plan B, dispersed camping. I know an access road to the beach right next to the naval base, a little way south of Oxnard, being careful not to miss the turn at the recycle plant. I go down the access road. I pull in just in time to watch the moon set behind the power station. The morning light reveals government property, no trespassing. I'm safe though, this side of the fence. I'd set the camera up inside last night to film the time lapse of the moon set. Okay, let's see where I landed last night.
a quick word from our sponsor as I have some breakfast and I let it warm up a bit before I venture on down to the beach. I avail myself of the facilities, then head to the beach. This area is protected for a bird sanctuary. Visitors have to be respectful of this and keep to the pathway. There's a lot to see and learn. Bring binoculars and telephoto lenses. The photo ops are plentiful. Cresting the dunes, a magnificent open beach is revealed. Long and deserted, it stretches north all the way to Oxnard Harbour. Few people venture down this far. It's a nice place to nestle into the dunes and fill in the tan lines, if you know what I mean. It's cool today and very windy, so no sunbathing. Beyond the fence is the Point Magoo Naval Base, miles of pristine beach, close to the public and perfectly preserved. I cut the visit short, say goodbye to the ducks and see what else the area has to offer. Past the composting plant and through the farmland. Some days I feel like a tumbleweed in a field full of cabbages. Strawberries, artichokes, and celery. Out on the road, I see a local produce stand. Looks so good, I want to eat it all. Now with a stock of fresh fruit by my side, I plot my route back to LA. I'm going to take Pacific Coast Highway and make the most of the trip before diving back into the hustle and bustle of the city. I stop for a while to watch the surfers at Point Magoo, the long reef break with moderate waves. There's a lot of great places to go along this stretch of PCH. On this trip I choose El Matador Beach. There are some rugged cliffs here and a couple of small coves. A long stairway leads down to the beach. The picturesque rock formations are a favourite backdrop for photographers. It's warmed up nicely now, so I'm going to hang here for the afternoon, then head back into town after the sun sets. <laughs> 